Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word Is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay. The fact that somebody like Barack Obama feels as though he can go in a room and speak to black men about politics and what they need to do is just proof and it shows how much of a spell black people were under when he was in office, okay? The fact that you could have somebody, a man named Barack Obama, who once delivered a eulogy to a Klansman, for a Klansman, exalted Cyclops, friends with KKK man, speak at his eulogy, speak highly of him. The fact that somebody can do that and still feel as though they can come and speak to black men about what they need to do just shows the level of sorcery black people were under with this dude. And it shows the amount of disrespect and lack of respect Barack Obama always had for black American people. And it is what it is. Here we got this dude who feels as though he can speak highly of a Klansman exalted Cyclops, this guy Bird, when he died. And he still can go speak to black people and think that he can get somewhere. But I'm glad that black people are holding it down. Black men and black women are going at him for this disrespect. So people, in this picture right here, this man, in this picture, you, you see this picture, you're probably thinking, well, what's this? This picture right here was taken in the year of 1948 in Talladega, Alabama. It shows two former slaves. Uh, the man's name is Jack Riddle. He's 107 years of age in this picture. And after his wife, Josie, she's 86. Now, as you can see, they're sitting with the Klan here and Santa Claus. So uh, they tried to say that this photograph is a show of charity on the part of the Ku Klux Klan towards this elderly black couple in Alabama. They claim that they gave this couple a gift so that they can have their wish to hear the preachers. Basically, they're saying these people, they wanted to listen to the preachers on the radio, so the Klan and Santa Claus is going to give them a gift. But we know that this black couple here in this picture is absolutely terrified um, what these white people did, these terrorists did. They made them come out for this photo op. And from what I gather, it makes sense. These The Dixiecrat Klan, okay, were trying to clean up, clean up their image a little bit at this time. And therefore, what they did is they went and made this black couple come out and take a picture with them. You can look at their faces. They don't look happy at all. And you can imagine how terrified they are with the history of their people, our people, my people, and the Ku Klux Klan in America, okay? How many times has this 86 and 107-year-old couple here seen the Klan brutalize and burn their relatives, take their lives, blow up their neighborhoods, and do all kinds of things like that? And in their old age, they make these people come out and take this horrific picture. That's what they did, okay? Now you will wonder how, with the history of the Klan in America, all the evil that they have done to our people, and the terror that they have inflicted on our people, and are, and are still allowed to do, because they had the support of the local, state, and federal government. Again, people, most of these guys in the local governments were also members of the Klan, you know, why would a black community, right? Why would the black community's beloved so-called sweetheart Barack Obama speak highly of a Klansman at his eulogy? Exalted Cyclops. That's right. That's his, that's his title. Okay? With somebody with some kind of compassion and respect for the history of the people who voted for him and adore him and who he can do no wrong with why would he give a heartfelt, invigorating eulogy speech for Congressman Byrd, who is the exalted Cyclops of the West Virginia chapter of the KKK? Why would Barack Obama do this? Okay. We even have people who made songs for him. My president is black. Didn't that dude, Jeezy or whatever, do this, make some song called My President is Black? Black people even have this guy in pictures with Malcolm X. Ultimate disrespect and Martin Luther King. So why would Barack Obama do such a thing and speak at this domestic terrorist 
funeral. Well, for one, this guy Bird is a Dixiecrat like Obama, a Democrat, in which the KKK comes out of. In addition, Barack Obama has no connection to black people in America, absolutely none. He's, his dad is a Kenyan dude. Black people coming up in school. Do you ever remember going to school, high school, junior high, and having somebody from Kenya in your class? On the East Coast, on the East Coast, in your hood, or in your area, wherever you from, wherever, you, wherever your suburb, somebody from Kenya? Absolutely not. Yeah, you had people from the continent of Africa, but not Kenya. And also, Obama's family is Caucasian. The American Obama has no black relatives whatsoever. He's from a white family. His mother is an entire white woman. Barack Obama probably has members in his family of the KKK. So go figure. That's how somebody like him can speak highly at this dude's eulogy, a guy that many of our people love. To Mona and Marjorie and the Senator Byrd's entire family, including uh, those adorable great-granddaughters that I had a chance to meet, Michelle and I offer you uh, our deepest sympathies. To Senator Byrd's friends, including the Speaker of the House, Majority Leader, the distinguished gentleman from West Virginia could be found at his desk until the very end doing the people's business. Delivering soul-stirring speeches, a hint of the Appalachians in his voice, stabbing the air with his finger, fiery as ever, years into his tenth decade. He was a Senate icon. He was a party leader. He was an elder statesman. And he was my friend. That's how I'll remember him. This country that we are not a nation of men. We are a nation of laws. Our way of life rests on our democratic institutions. Precisely because we are fallible, it falls to each of us to safeguard these institutions, even when it's inconvenient, and pass on our republic more perfect than before. Considering the vast learning of this self-taught senator, his speeches sprinkled with the likes of Cicero and Shakespeare and Jefferson, seems fitting to close with one of his favorite passages in literature, a passage from Moby Dick. And there is a Catskill eagle in some souls that can alike dive down into the blackest gorges and soar out of them again and become invisible in the sunny spaces. And even if he forever flies within the gorge, that gorge is in the mountains. So that even in his lowest swoop, the mountain eagle is still higher than any other bird upon the plain, even though they soar. Robert Bird was a mountain eagle, and his lowest swoop was still higher than the other birds upon the plain. May God bless Robert C. Bird. Here we go, y'all seen it. He said that this guy, the exalted Cyclops bird, was flying high amongst the eagles. And you see he tried to make excuses for him. You could see where he tried to clear it up. And that's what a lot of you Negroes do also, I noticed. I've had people say to me, well, he was in the KKK, but he changed his heart. You don't even know this dude. How do you know what's in his heart? Once a Klansman, always a Klansman. He was the exalted Cyclops of the West Virginia chapter of the KKK. Some of you Negroes make excuses for people that you never even spoke to before. Absolutely sick. So this is why somebody like Barack Obama feels as though in 2024 he'd come back at the last minute and speak to black men. Although I would seriously doubt that there are any black men who classify as a man 
that would sit down and listen to Obama speak. I really, I really doubt that. I mean, come on. He's been giving disrespectful speeches to black people for so long. And he's also been a beneficiary of the church lady complex where he can go speak. He can say anything. He can say, your mama's a hoe. And they would stand up and clap and scream and stomp their feet. You know, that church lady complex. The pastor says it, they're clapping and stomping their feet, regardless of what he said. I mean, I've seen this guy, Michael Eric Dyson, do it. I've seen Judge Mathis do it, and Obama did it all the time. He always spoke down in disrespect for the black people. If you ever go back and watch his speeches, whenever there were black people there that he was speaking to, he could say the dumbest, most shallow, empty things, and people would clap, and they would applaud him, okay? He always had this operation a conglomerate of shine bone buck dancing celebrity coons who promoted him well as uh, uh, promoted him pretty well also. And these people knew that black people were pretty much in the personality worship when it comes to celebrities. So they knew how to put the right celebrities. It's called sorcery, y'all. They love them. It worked out. I never did. You know, I never, you know, look, man, I was that pessimist from the beginning, but I give people a break. Okay. I get it. Black people want to be happy. First time around, they want to, okay, I never seen it like that. Just based off of history and what I know from Imam El Hajj, Malik Shabazz, a.k.a. Malcolm, Malcolm X, and other people like Ida B. Wells and other people when they spoke and things they said, H. Rat Brown, Fred Hampton, other people, there was no need for me either to even fall for this whole bamboozling. But I get it. People just want to be happy. But this guy still thought in 2024 He has the juice to come around and speak to black men or even black people about what they need to be doing in their lives. Disrespectful mutt. And I applaud the brothers and the sisters who went hard on dude who are saying things and using their uh, uh, their platforms to speak out against this nonsense. Need to worry about his family. Worry about your daughters, Obama, on these campuses laying around and smoking with white frat boys and drinking and stuff like that. Worry about them. Worry about why you sent your daughters to go do an internship with Weinstein when they were big enough to have ornaments on them, okay? They were that age, still underage, but worry about why y'all why you did that, why y'all do that type of nasty stuff. Y'all crazy, man. Y'all crazy. The only time this guy... Obama ever spoke to black men was when he was trying to push something for the LGG people recruiting more young black men into that sick stuff. And if you notice, almost all the young black men who came off of the vein of these little programs he had or whatever, they're all into this lizard stuff right now. Rainbow lizard stuff. Most all of them. That's when I remember years ago. I remember years ago when uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, he said something that he was talking one time about something and he was like, if you look at all the interns at the white house under Obama, you'll notice that most of all of them young black men are gay. And I was like, wow, how does Umar know that? Because at the time I was around there quite often. And if you look and you seen, and anybody that was there, know, you knew that any of them young black men who were interns were walking around slim duck walking at the White House, loose neck, bow ties on and just looking weird. They looked like they were already sweet. They had internships under the Obama administration. There was no young man that I seen that looked like a regular young man, a masculine, whatever, played sports, a regular, somebody that you think, okay, yeah, he going to be, our, yeah, whatever. He, he good. He cool. You, I didn't see that. If there was, get in the comments. Leave a comment if you know anything about this, because I've seen it. And I was wondering, well, how, how uh, Umar know that? Because he sure enough was right. Anyway, this guy, Obama, has no respect for black people. He has no respect for our history, for our freedom fighters, for our culture. Okay? Somebody who can speak highly of the KKK's exalted Cyclops. Okay? Speak highly of him. That's because that's what he is as well. This guy exalted Cyclops, somebody, a West Virginia cracker who's recruited many terrorists off of his vein, who knows what the people that he recruited have went on to do with their lives and how many black people they might have brutalized and things like that. Robert Byrd. How many killers and terrorists came off the vein of Robert Byrd? 
You know what I mean? Anyway, for all you people who still want to be delusional and, and, and still just really trying hard to pick a better white person, how do you feel comfortable bringing up MAGA? How do you feel comfortable bringing up these Trump MAGA people and speaking about racism? And yes, Trump MAGA people are hardcore racists. Yes, they are. But how do you feel comfortable making a fool of yourself, bringing up racism and terror when you support and vote for and speak highly of and love the same people who are friends with Klansmen, speak of their eulogy? Even Biden was there. That's his friend speaking highly of him. Obama. So where does it make sense that you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, oh, we the MAGA is right. You don't care about right. You weirdos, you weaklings do not. You Negro bootlicks. You don't care about racism. That's why I laugh whenever I see people responding to MAGA. Oh, look at them. They're going to do that. But you, you like the other MAGA, the other racist people. It's a bunch of ignorance, y'all. Anyway, makes sense as far as racism. These people do not care about racism, y'all. We got to outcast these people, y'all, these Sean Bones. Robert Byrd, the Cyclops, exalted. Anyway, people, keep your neck, I'm sorry, keep your boot on the jugular, on the neck, on the vein of these bootlicks, these shine bones, these tethers, whatever they want to be, these hateful people who promote racism as long as it's coming from a group of people who they prefer as opposed to saying later for all of it. Keep your boot on their necks. You're doing a good job. Easy.